In today's video, I'll be giving you a technical rundown of an Arduino-based power monitoring system I've built for the lab that can measure voltage, current, power factor, phase angle, apparent power, and real power. Welcome back to the lab. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a brief look at the lab's power monitoring system that I've designed and built. So, when I was first envisioning the lab, I wanted to have some sort of system that would monitor and measure all the power coming in for two reasons. One, because it's important to know how much current we're drawing, because if you're drawing too much power into the lab from whatever experiment or project I'm running, it could obviously trip breakers or overload the system. And number two, because the project itself would be fun to do. It would involve electrics, because it's dealing with mains voltages and mains currents, electronics, because it would deal with low voltages, potential divider circuits and signaling, and of course programming, because in order to capture the data, process it, and present it on a screen or record it on a database, there'd have to be some programming involved. Now all of those three things are what I'm interested in, because I'm an electrical engineer, so it would be a fun project to do. So this here is the main power cabinet for the lab. Power enters through this armoured cable down here, and inside here are the different parts for the different circuits, including the circuit breakers and the fuses. Now, this is a very big cabinet, even for this lab. It's much bigger than the house's main consumer unit, and that's because we got this for free. It was being thrown away from a local public building, so I thought we might as well use it rather than having to buy one. And it also gives us enough space to house other projects, including the power monitoring, which we'll go into a bit more detail in a moment. Um, but usually we wouldn't need a cabinet as heavy duty as this. It was three phase, it did used to say 415 volts, obviously I had to change that. So let's get into the hardware behind the power monitoring system. So the most important part really is this here, it's the OLED screen, it's what presents the information being recorded and measured and calculated. And I'll show you a close up of that in a moment. Now if we open up the cabinet, you can see all the hardware involved. This side is the hardware required for the circuits of the lab. So you have the fuses and the circuit breakers, the bus bars, and of course the main isolator here, which allows you to shut off all the power to the lab in the event of an emergency. Now that's all been there for ages. That's been there since the power first ran to this lab about a year ago now. Um, and of course all of this was empty space because it doesn't need any more. Like I said, this was for a big public building with many more circuits. In fact, when we got this cabinet, it was full of components, which are reused and recycled for this project. Now, there's actually two things going on in here. There's the power monitoring and there's a backup power system, which is a UPS system that I've built and integrated into here that will kick in if there's um, ever a power cut and provide power to the lights and the wall sockets and stuff like that. I'll go into detail on that in a separate video because it's, it's a separate project, but they share the same hardware, so I can't really um, do this video without mentioning it. Now, the heart of the system is this thing right here. That's an Arduino Nano and that is what controls the entire backup power and power monitoring system. Cables from the Arduino Nano connect to the hardware that measure the parameters we want to measure, including voltage and the current and the power factor. And then cables come off from here, run to the cabinet door, and then go to the screen. Now let's have a quick look at the actual circuit diagram for the system, and then I'll do a close-up of the actual components involved, and go into a few more details on how the system actually operates. Okay, so we've come over to the second whiteboard here because I already had the circuit diagram drawn out for when I was actually designing and implementing the project. Now you can ignore everything on this side because that's for the back of power. Like I said, that'll be the next video um, released in a week or two. So there's three main systems here and I've put them in three different colours to make that clear. The Arduino sits in the centre and that does all the data processing. Over here we have the mains power coming straight in from uh, the armoured cable that you saw. And that lights up the lights on the front panel that says panel live. That just shows that there's power entering the cabinet and that the cabinet is live, so you obviously don't want to touch anything unless you turn the power off. Now, we're measuring primarily three different parameters with this power measurement system. The voltage, the current, and the power factor. And I decided to do this because I wanted to have the best power monitoring system available. So I, I controversially named this video the best power monitoring system, and I've done that for two reasons. 
Number one, because before I was making this, uh, or when I started making this, I wanted to look at what other people had done before, so I could come up with ideas of how I'd make my own power monitoring system. And I think this is the best out of the ones that I've seen on YouTube. Number two, this system measures every parameter really you could want from a power monitoring system. Um, I went to great lengths to make sure it could do that. So all the data needed, even if it isn't right, is, even if it isn't that important right now, is being measured and recorded and can be used in the future. So we've got a voltage circuit up here that measures the voltage coming in. Now that should stay at you know around 240 volts. It fluctuates a bit. The current system measures the amount of current being drawn, arguably the most important, so we, make sure, so we can make sure we don't overload any systems, and we can make sure we're not using too much power. The final system down here in the green measures the power factor, and that works by measuring the phase angle and the power factor value between zero and one, and both of those are presented on the screen. Using the voltage and current, you can work out the power, the apparent power, Using the power factor system in conjunction with these two, you can work out the real power and then you can work out the reactive power. So from the system, you can calculate all the values that are needed in regards to power monitoring. So the system is semi-complicated, but I'll try and break it down. So up here for the voltage, we simply have a step-down transformer to lower the voltage to about 10 volts and a potential divider because the Arduino uh, analog Input pins can't handle that high voltage, it needs to be between 0 and 5. So we potentially divide that down, and that just goes into, like I said, one of the analog pins. It's a little bit more complicated than that, there's a few diodes in there to stop negative voltage. Uh, I didn't use the Zener diodes in the end for various reasons, and these resistor values aren't entirely correct, because this was the first draft, I changed it as I built it, and I just left this diagram up here, but it's more or less the same, you get the idea. The current measurement system is similar. Instead of having a step-down voltage transformer, we actually have a current transformer, which is just a single winding. I already had a load of those built up from um, a ton of current screens that I ordered that I haven't actually used yet. Uh, a burden resistor for the current transformer, and then we take that value and simply put it again into one of the analog pins. Now for the current transformer, the voltage coming out of it is actually extremely low. It's below half a volt, which is enough for the Arduino to handle negative voltages, so we don't need any diodes there. And again, it didn't use the Zener diode there. Now, the power factor system is a bit more complicated, um, because I've never really done much work with op-amps before. Um, I didn't come up with this design myself, I found this online, I'll put a link in the description, because this uh, I saw a video on YouTube and the person who made this documented this, and it works really well, so I'm really happy with that. Haven't had any problems with it so far, so thank you to whoever you are who came up with that design. I'm obviously not going to take credit for it. So, like I said, it's a bit more complicated because it involves logic gates and op-amps, but the basic idea is you take one input from the voltage measurement system and you take one input from the current measurement system and you compare them. Because the power factor, for those of you who don't know, is simply the... It's, it's almost a measure of how efficient your system is and how much real power is being used and how much power is being wasted to create magnetic fields and things such as motors and other inductive loads. And what that does is it causes a phase shift between the voltage and current waveforms, because these are both sine waves. If you have more of an inductive or capacitive load on the system, or just a reactive load being um, drawn from this mains AC supply, then these two waveforms are going to become out of phase. And whether it's in, uh, whether the voltage leads or lags depends whether it's a capacitive or inductive load. Regardless, this measurement is taken by getting the current, getting the voltage, and comparing them. And that's what these op amps do here. They're acting as zero crossing detectors, these diodes are clamping diodes, and the output of this is a square wave. And it's essentially a one when the voltage is above zero, and this op-amp outputs a one when the current is above zero. Those two go into an XOR gate. Now the XOR gate will obviously, because it's a logic gate, will compare these two input values, and will only an output, an output one when any one of these is on. So if both of them are on, there'll be no output. If neither of them are on, there'll be no output. But if one of them is on exclusively, there'll be a logical one outputted, which is just plus five volts. That is read by the Arduino. It's actually um, a digital pin, but that doesn't matter. And what it basically does is it measures the pulse. It measures how long that is on for. Because if these waveforms are perfectly in phase, then these will both be on at the same time and there will be no pulse. If these waveforms are out of phase, then there'll be a lag between the time when this comes on and the time when this comes on, and so the pulse will be longer. The Arduino simply takes that measurement, looks at the time, looks at the delay, and 
through a bit of mathematics, calculates the phase angle and calculates the power factor as a value between 0 and 1. Then you can take those information, put it all together, work out your power, your apparent power, your real power, your reactive power, and all that information is presented on the screen. And that's about it. So it's a fairly in-depth system, um, and it did take a while to get it up and running. I had to build each of these individually, debug them, test them, and calibrate them. Um, however, there were problems, because when I put these all three together, connected to the same system, because of course, you've now got this power factor system connected to the voltage system and connected to the current system, they didn't all behave nicely. They actually interfered with each other. I had to use a second current transformer for the power factor system. Um, so again, this diagram isn't perfect. It's not completely accurate, but it's, um, you get the message. It's most of the way there. Uh, but the system works now in the end. I've got it all working fine. And of course, I've got it all calibrated because once you've got this measurement of the current and the voltage, you then, you, you've got a representation of the value. You haven't got the actual value. So you need to do a bit of regression analysis. So I did some data processing and basically found out a constant of proportionality that relates the values coming in from the current system, from the voltage system, to the actual current and voltage being recorded, and it's fairly accurate. So let's take a look at the hardware involved in the system in greater detail. So this is the front panel. You can ignore all this. This is for the backup power. This here is the panel live light, which is on. If there's electricity running into the system, that's always on, unless the isolator switch is triggered down there, but that's for emergencies. So here you can see the data being presented and updated in real time. On the first line we have the voltage, and that's UK mains voltage. You can then see the current draw in amps. I didn't have enough space on the screen to put the unit, but the unit is self-explanatory anyway. AP is your apparent power, so that is simply your voltage times your current. RP is your reactive power, so that is your voltage times your current times the power factor, which is the value between zero and one. The power factor is on the line below, labelled PF. The A is the phase angle, so they're di directly related by a cosine. Below that is information for the backup power system, so that's the backup battery and the status of the backup power. Again, ignore those bottom lines, that's going to be the next video. One upgrade I want to make to the system in the future is to have all this information logged. So at some point I want to have a server in here that will serve a multitude of functions, but one of those will be a database system. And what I want to do is I want to take all this data, either wirelessly or through a cable that will run out the top of this into the trunking that you can't see, but there's trunking that goes around all of the lab, and then that will go down to the server and it will store all this information and then it can graph it, you can see how much power you're using when, but what you can also do is take the, the power, the real power or the apparent power you've used over the past 24 hours, and actually multiply that by the price of electricity here where I live, and then actually work out how much money you've spent per day. Um, we have that on our smart meter in the house, but this will be specifically the, for the lab, and that'd be nice to know because we do use a lot of current here. So again, on the left side, we have all the systems required just for the circuits here in the lab. We have the mains power coming through the isolator switch down there. That then travels up to the breakers, uh, well, for the, for the fuses first, then through the breakers, and then there's the bus bars there, those gray cables at the side, the twin and earths, they're the mains. Uh, the mains cables coming from the, the lighting circuit and from the plugs, they run directly into those bus bars for neutral and ground. Um, that's, that's all for just getting the, the power here in the lab working. This system here is the backup power and the power monitoring. So right in the center we have the Arduino Nano, that's the heart of it all. The program on there is running uh, all the data processing, presenting the information to the screen and capturing the data from the measurement devices. So that there is the voltage transformer. That's simply just connected to the mains and that gets the voltage and steps it down. That connection up there, that's just a series of terminal strips that allow for easy maintenance of taking components out and putting new ones in if they break. I've had to use that a lot whilst debugging the system. Um, so that's just connections, that's all that's going on up there. That reading from the voltage transformer is sent to a voltage divider, which you can see from those resistors there, and then goes through the blue wire to an analog pin on the Arduino Nano. Up at the top, you can see we have two current transformers. That's a contactor, ignore that for now, that's for the backup power. But we have one current transformer for just measuring the current, and one for the power factor, because like I said, I had to use separate ones. Those just go through the terminal strip down to burden resistors, again on this breadboard. Um, I'm using this proto board for a variety of functions. I've actually got it separated in the back. These components all aren't connected to each other. I'm just using it as um, one board that will do many things. So we have the burden resistors on there, and then again, those signals just feed directly into the Nano. And then finally, we take the, the, other, the, the output from the other current transformer, 
and as you probably guessed, those two chips there, one is the op-amp chip, quad op-amp, and the other one is the XOR gates. We have a couple of resistors and the, the diodes, uh, the clamping diodes, wiring, and there are also a series of capacitors that I forgot to mention on the circuit diagram. They're just for filtering out noise and any AC ripple. You can also see some electrolytics, some ceramics right up there. Again, just so um, fills out any noise so the logic values are read correctly. The output of that just, again, feeds directly into the Arduino. And that's it. So it's a lot of wires. It's quite messy, um, but it, it works. And now that it's installed, it doesn't actually need to be touched. Um, the Arduino itself gets its power from that little USB from that little step down transformer there. Again, just an AC adapter that I took apart and used for this because it was a charger that I don't need anymore. That USB can be substituted for um, connection to a computer if we need to reprogram it, but um, because it's the program's done, it doesn't need touching, the system can just be left how it is. Finally, that information, once it's all processed, exits through a series of these colored wires up into the uh, connection strip at the top, then down through the side to the door where the screen is. And the screen is held on by those bolts there and the information is just presented to the screen. In terms of accuracy, the system's more or less there. The current can vary between plus or minus half an amp, which I know is quite considerable, but really the current measurement is there so we can see if we're drawing a lot of current or if we're drawing hardly any, and also if we're going over a certain amount. and. To be honest, it performs well enough for what I need. Now remember, the system is a microprocessor, it's an Arduino Nano, it can do all sorts of calculations. So if I really wanted to, I could sit down for a long time and get it really perfectly tuned for each amp that travels through it. It can take a different reading and do use a different constant proportionality to work out the actual current. And that could get really, really accurate. But again, I just don't really see the point in spending a long time tuning that and carefully calibrating it because it performs its function well enough. It does the job intended and I'm happy with how it is. In terms of the power factor, I've noticed that working very well. Whenever I plug in, say, a transformer, the phase angle goes up a lot. Whenever I put a resistive load on the system, such as a kettle, the phase angle reduces considerably. Um, I don't actually have a power factor like measurement device. Um, I don't have anything like that on any of my multimeters, so I can't actually see how accurate it is, but from for simple principles, it seems to be accurate enough. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed. This was just a short video to give a technical rundown of my power monitoring system, how it works and the circuit diagrams behind it. If you want to try and build one yourself, you can use the diagrams that are presented as a base, but remember those were not official, the values on there were that was my initial draft to change things in practice. Watch out for the next video where I'll be talking about the backup power, which is arguably a lot more interesting than this, because this is just a screen with some numbers on it at the end of the day. Backup power is cool because it provides the entire lab with power from a series of batteries if there's ever a power cut or um, a breaker trip or anything like that. And allows the server that will be in here eventually to keep running in the event of a power failure. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, um, any technical questions regarding any of this, um, feel free to ask in the comments. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video.